Hi, today I want to share with you three different ways I use to visualize my Slamsic data. Before making plots for publication, we will start by doing some due diligence and look it at the raw data at the single nucleotide level. For example, we have the RS1 gene here with a good feed and a half-life of around two hours. I will use this gene as an example of what to expect from your raw data. So when you run your analysis at a certain point, you align the reads to generate BAM files. In our case, we are using Slamdunk and the files are in this BAM folder. And here we have four different time points. So now I will open a file for time 0, 3 and 12 to see how the raw reads map to the genome. So this is a region of the RS1 gene and you can see a bunch of reads here in gray mapping or aligning to the genomic sequence. What is evident is that you have a lot of blue lines here and these are C mutations that usually come from this, these T's that you see over here. And this is the mutation that we are inducing with our chemical in the SLAMSIC protocol. So this is what we expect. This is for time zero. Next, when we move to the alignment of the reads after three hours of the chase, we can see that there is still a lot, are a lot of blue, but probably half of what we had before. And these mutations are typically originating from these genomic T's. This is in line with the half-life of the transcript being around two to three hours. And then we, when we look at the alignment at 12 hours, we see that there is actually very few C mutations. And even in this case, we see that the mutations are coming from these A's rather from T's. So at this point, we don't have any more of our metabolic labeling. So this is what you should expect if you look at the read level. Now let's plot the data for this gene in a nice graph that we can use for a publication. The first thing that we are going to do is to get a conversion or mutation values from the normalized table for our gene of interest. So we have this normalized table that I show you how to generate in my previous video and that you can check now using the link on the screen. We are going to get these values for our gene of interest for plotting. And this is for the RS1 transcript where we see the decay with a half-life of around two hours. So the first thing that we are going to do is to plot these values and we'll do it with this plot function here. So we do that and we see the different normalized values showing a nice decay. So the next thing that we want to do is to add some statistics and to that end we use this stats function. This will add the mean and the media value to the to the plot. So if we go ahead and we plot that, what we have are the previous dot, but also in black the mean and the standard deviation in are, are here represented by the bars. So this is good. Now we can add some extra information. So with this table for plotting that we have here, in this section what we are doing is to calculate this k value again so that we can plot this function in our graph. And we do this with this stat function and we pass this function one that we define here by calculating this k value. By the way, all the code will be down in the description. So once we have that, we run again this function and what we get are the dots, the statistics, and also the fitted model here in black. Okay, so far so good. The last thing that I want to do is to make it publication ready. So I add a bunch of specifications here for the plot that I'm highlighting. And when we run the function, we have a cleaner plot with nice defined lines that we can use for publication. If you want to understand how the changes to the format of the plots work, don't forget to check here the link to the video where I go more in depth in this issue. So far we have been focusing on visualizing data at a single transcript level. The final plot I want to share conveys the half-life values for a group of transcripts. So this table contains a half-life for the whole population. If we have a look, we have for the different transcripts the value of the half-life and also this statistic are 
that is an indication of the fit. And we will derive the mean decay k constant and the k constant for the first and third quartiles of the population. In my previous video, we went through how to generate this table and how to get these k values. You can check the video using the link now on the screen. We will use this plot function and we will start by plotting the mean half-life for the whole population. We do that, we have this decay curve, which is okay, but is not very informative. We can do better. So to do that, what I'm going to do is add the, a shade to the plot that shows like the first quartile and the third quartile range for the decay using this geom ribbon function here. So if we run that, what we get is now this range of half-life just to have an idea of the variation within the population. Okay, so this is better, but we can also add like the half-life uh, value for the whole population to have it as a reference. And we will do this with this geom H line and B lines. So we launch that and we have the plot here at 0 0.5 where it intercepts and it gives you the half-life of 9.3 for the population. That's good just to have a sense of where is the half-life. All right, having done that, we try to make this as publication quality as possible. So, so I include all of this code to make the code look a little bit better. And if we go ahead and we launch that, there we have our code with the decay for the mean and the range. And also we are highlighting the actual value of the half-life for the population. So if you want to go into more details on any aspect of the SLAMSIG protocol, don't forget to check the playlist that is now on screen. And that's it for today. I will see you there.